Going to prove now the theorem, the measure of an inscribed angle in a circle is equal to one half the measure of its in intercepted arc. This right here, as you can see, we have a circle, the sketch. We have two chords, AB and BC, and this an angle right here is called an inscribed angle in a circle. And what we're saying is it is going to equal to the measure of this arc right here, one half of this arc. Okay, so we're going to prove that, and essentially we're going to have to do this in three different cases. One is where the chord and the, the, the second chord right here goes right through as the diameter. Other one where it goes like this, and another one where it goes like this, where it's either less than the, the diameter or it's greater than. And so let's start with, in this case right here in case number one. This case right here, what we have is essentially this drawing here, AB, goes through the center of the circle, O, to over here. All right? Now, the first thing is we have the given ABC is the inscribed angle in the circle, which I've already mentioned. In the first case, we know that, looking over here at this sketch, we know that angle O, excuse me, AOC, is going to be equal to the measure of this arc right here, and that's that's from a uh, using the definition of the measure of an arc. Next, we know that the AO is equal to or congruent to BO because these are both radii of the same circle, originating from the uh, from the center, and we also know that the angle OAB and the angle OBA are the same because guess what? This right here is an isosceles triangle. These two sides are equal, therefore the base side, the base angles are, are congruent. And we also know that this angle right here, AOC, is going to be equal to this angle OAB and this angle here of OBA because this right here is an external angle and it is equal to the sum of the non-adjacent angles. This would be the adjacent angle. This is the non-adjacent angles. From that, we know that we also know that the angle ABC and angle OBA are the same angle, the identity. Okay. Next, we know that this angle right here of ABC is equal to one half of the angle of, uh, excuse me, AOC, and that's going to be equal to, because if we know this right here, because this right, this right here is going to be half of that because of this, we've already mentioned these two right here are the same, right? So we're essentially substituting, and therefore this right here, this angle right here of AOC, C, which is normally this, and since this is going to be one half of that, then it's going to be one half of the measure of this arc, and that's done by substitution. So we've already proven then from this case right here, the first case. The second case is where the second chord comes, does not go through the center, but is less than going through the center. And in this case right here, we know that A, B, D, A, B, D, is going to be equal to one half of this arc here because we just proved that in the step two, which was we just proved that right there, okay? And we also know that this angle right here of C, B, D is going to be equal to one half of this. We, it's essentially what we have just proven here. So that was all done proven in, in, in step, uh, step two because that's the inscribed, inscribed angle. And we know that now that A, B, D is going to be equal to the sum of A, B, C and C, B, D. As you can see right here, all it essentially is is that this, this is the sum of these right here, and so it's adding up those two angles together. So it's just adding up the elements. We then know that A, a B, C is going to be is going to be equal to the angle of A, B, D minus this angle here of C, B, D. This so again, we're subtracting the two elements that we had done here on step, the, the previous step. And from, from that, we know then that by using our substitution is that we know that from that, 
then we know that one half of the arc of AC and CD, all right, those those combined together, which is what we had mentioned over here, is going to be equal to one half of this arc here, and therefore is going to equal to one half AC, and therefore we have proven the step, the second case, all right. Now, in the third case is where it does not go, it goes beyond the center of the circle. In this case right here, we know that ABC is equal to, <clears throat> excuse me, ABD and B, excuse me, D, B, C, because of this are just a different elements, right? <clears throat> and then we know from here, from this, this angle ABD is one half, <coughs> excuse me, of this arc, because that's an inscribed angle, which we've already uh, proven from that, which is this arc right here of D, excuse me, I'm, I missed a step here, and then B, <coughs> D, B, C is going to be one half of this arc, okay, that's again the inscribed angle. Now, if we <coughs> take the sum of these, of B, C, A, B, C, then it's going to be the sum of these angles that we have just uh, previously done right here of where we have one half AD and one half BC. These are added together and they're obviously equal to this right here of one half AC. And therefore we have proven all three different cases of that the measure of an inscribed angle in a circle is equal to one half is measured, the measure of its intercepted circle or arc.